It's springtime and you have baby goats on the ground or maybe you're soon to have baby goats and you maybe maybe have been wondering what are some problems that might arise with baby goats and in fact I just got this question not long ago in one of my emails. Becca asked just a thought, since it's getting near kidding season, would a video on common kid illnesses be in order? So I thought, you know, that's a really good idea because there are some things that can come up and can cause problems that you want to be aware of if you have have goat kids around. It's amazing how fast things can go south uh, with goats. You think everything's fine and suddenly it's not. I'm going to put in a disclaimer. This is going to have a lot of information in it and I try to keep things short but I want you to be in possession of all the information and knowledge that you can. I know some people have complained about some of my videos that they're just too long and there's too much information and I just can't help it. I want you to have all the information you need so you can use the timestamps below this video if you're specifically looking for one thing or another with your baby kid that way you can jump to that specific topic and learn about it but I encourage you just to watch all of it so that you're aware at least that that knowledge is in your brain so that at some point down the lane you can think oh, I remember something and my goat I better go look that up what did Dulcie say again so I encourage you with all of that information. Just soak it all in and, and store it away for later use. But before we go on, I just wanted to really quick mention a video that I did a couple weeks ago. It was on goat shivering. Now, if you didn't watch the entire video on shivering goats, please do that. It's very serious. When it gets really, 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 really cold, like it does here where there's a week or two of just negative 20 degrees, goats shiver because it's cold. But it's also very, 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 very serious. And we're gonna to touch on that in this video with baby goats. But you need to not just watch these videos halfway through because there's so much more information in them that is very pertinent to the health of your goats. So I implore you, if you didn't watch that entire video, please do that because it's a normal phenomenon for animals and humans to shiver because it helps keep us warm. But if we're sick, it means we're sick and shivering can be a very first, you know, a key to uh, saying, your goat saying, hey, I'm sick and I need help. So please don't brush it off when I said that, yes, it is a God-given thing for goats to shiver and, and just say, oh, my goats are shivering, it doesn't mean anything because it can mean something very serious. So I hope I... <laughs> I hope I have made that clear that you need to know all the signs of sickness for a goat and shivering is one of them. So let's start with that as far as problems that can arise with uh, goat kids that are very young or newborn and, and problems that can happen. I have a whole pile of goat kids here that are just snoozing. They're just snoozing in the sun, aren't ya? You see why, you don't need to eat my nose. So one of the very first problems that can arise with uh, baby goats is that they didn't get enough colostrum. That is absolutely vital and key for them to get that within the first hours of their life because it is their, it's the perfect makeup of what they need, need nutritionally and that, that immune system boost that they need to be healthy for the first days of their lives and all through their lives. It's their foundation block. And so if a baby kid doesn't get that colostrum in what they need, the amounts of it that they need right away, they can get lethargic and sick cold and and just go downhill very quickly so that is kind of the first thing that is key with your baby goats you think another thing that can happen that's relating to uh, what I just mentioned so the colostrum is for the newborns but if you have a kid that misses a meal uh, you know for whatever reason they're not getting enough uh, milk from their mama or something <laughs> goes on where they're just not getting enough fuel, enough milk, they can get chilled and start shivering and, and get sick really quickly. They they're just don't have... <laughs> 
um, that they don't have the fuel that they need. I have a goat. I just have a goat chewing on my camera. Go away. Go away. Come here. Go that way. <laughs> but I, I'm holding on to this guy who is a, a sweet nuisance because he is the prime example of that. Not long ago, it's been probably a couple weeks now, he, and I'm gonna now pick up this one because she wants to chew on the camera. <laughs> but that other one, I came out here uh, one morning and he was shivering. And I was like, you know, it's it was cold. Maybe he had a cold snap go through. Um, and he um, was shivering. And I thought, you know, the other babies are not shivering. They shouldn't be at this age with them being warm in the warm barn and all that. They shouldn't be shivering, even though it was colder than it than it had been. And so immediately, because of the shivering, I knew that there was a problem. And after taking his temperature, his temperature was normal. So again, that's the first thing you'll want to do with any of these guys. If you suspect anything, is take their temperature. It's vital <laughs> when dealing with babies is to take their temperature. And so after taking the temperature, I uh, realized, well, you know, he's... He, his temperature is normal, so what's going on? And uh, I surmised, surmised that because with all these little goats running around, uh, and we have one of them right here, this little guy, we're bottle, whoops, we're bottle feeding this one. <laughs> and, and so he is just like running around to all the mommies like, feed me, feed me, feed me. <laughs> and I think he was causing a little bit of frustration among the goat mamas. And they were all like, everyone leave me alone. I can't do this. And and so I think just the confusion of all the, the baby goats all over caused the mommies to just kind of say leave me alone and then that that one that I was mentioning he uh, just missed a meal the night before and so his you know his blood sugar was a little low and um, and so that day I did lock up that mama with her baby so even though they were um, had been out for quite a while for weeks I, I did lock them up together in a stall and I had a heat lamp in there and and so he was able to nurse with mama and and he then was completely fine by the end of the day and that next day and, and so he just needed some milk now if I hadn't have been attentive to that and had just allowed it to uh, get worse and not been paying attention um, things could have really gotten bad uh, quickly because once they aren't when they're not eating the rumen shuts down and and then it just is this cycle that that complicates things just more and more and more and it just gets worse and worse so uh, that's something as well so even if you have kids that are eating well well, they've been with mama for weeks and all of that 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 things like that for whatever reason can come up where they they miss a meal they're not getting enough and um, and they just need to get that that extra uh, food in them and and for our situation that situation just put in putting mama in a little place uh, locked up with their babies was just what was needed so if you you need to be just paying attention to your to your babies paying attention to the mamas are they feeding them are they feeding them enough are they being a attentive um <laughs> feeding my hair <laughs> and um and just making sure you don't have a baby that's got getting forgotten and not getting enough milk and you have a good mommy you do you're getting enough milk aren't you yes you are you got a good mommy another thing that can come up is birth defects you know for the first time ever I had a birth defect this year and the only reason I knew about it was because this baby was not thriving uh, you know it was eating but it was not thriving and it and no matter what I did it did pass and I took it in to get a necropsy done uh, and I really think that's important if you have a baby die for unknown reasons and you can't figure it out take it into the vet and have them look at it you will learn so much by doing that you'll have answers to what went wrong you I guarantee will learn something about it and so I did go in with this baby and we looked from top to bottom 
um, inside a goat and that's actually the first time that I personally uh, saw a necropsy happen in person and so I was able to ask a lot of questions but this baby goat had between the opening of the, the last stomach and the, the actual intestines there was like a blockage there was a the the opening between them it went from large opening to very very small and nothing was going into the small intestines it was it was just blocked off and it was a birth defect and so that little baby was getting food and so its stomach and and rumen and all that was completely full uh, but it was also fermenting and, and nothing was happening. It wasn't able to go into and finish its its course. And, um, and so he was actually just not getting any nutrients because his body wasn't able to develop and do what it, what it should. And so that's just one example of what can happen. And I honestly, I guess I'm not even sure how often uh, things happen where there's a cleft palate or uh, maybe there's the the anal opening is blocked or closed or there isn't one or there's maybe some uh, deformities where they urinate things like that I don't know how common those things are but just know that sometimes that is a possibility and and it's just something to think about um, if you do have a baby that is what is going on and and it does die um, do get it in for necropsy to find out why okay. We got snuggly bubba goats everywhere. So another thing that you always need to be looking at is their poop. Know what baby poop looks like and what it shouldn't look like. Know, you know, like when they first um, are starting to poop, what their colostrum poop looks like and the malconium and uh, all of that. That Just knowing what your goat's poop should look like is very important because they can have problems and their poop will be kind of an indicator of what's going on. So if they're not pooping, if they're constipated, that is very serious. You need your goats pooping. And so again, you just need to be monitoring and watching. Are my goats pooping? Oh no, this one isn't pooping. It's very serious. It's life threatening if your goat isn't pooping. And so uh, if they're not pooping, uh, the, an enema might need might be in order, might need to be used to get them going. And so the, the opposite of, of constipation is diarrhea. And so it's kind of like the, the shivering, you know, just shivering is something that God made us do when we're cold, but it can be a problem. So it's the same thing with diarrhea. So sometimes diarrhea is just happening because the body is eliminating something bad that was eaten. Uh, so really with diarrhea, you don't want to treat diarrhea until you know why there's diarrhea. You know, are we talking that there was something that was eaten that shouldn't have been? Are we talking that there is some sort of a worm or coccidia that is causing the problem? Um, is there uh, something that they're eating getting too much milk? Uh, you know, it, there is um, a number of things that can cause diarrhea and you want to figure out why there's diarrhea before you're actually uh, trying to fix it. You don't want to complicate things by just shoving things down your goat and, and not really addressing the problem in the first place, aren't we? Oh yes, you have to switch up though. I can't just pay attention to just one of you. I have to pay attention to you all. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so coccidiosis is something that you need to be watching for in your young ones. It can happen with your older ones, but generally it affects these young ones the most. And so coccidiosis is not a worm and wormers will not will not get rid of them. It is a protozoan that actually tech attacks the lining of their gut and can cause a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. In fact, uh, it can cause so much damage that your goat is actually not able to uh, absorb nutrients like they should. So as you can see, it's a very serious thing. And a lot of times it happens when there's uh, a lot of poop around, it's very unclean and, um, and you're 
you just don't want to allow this to get bad. So there are two ways that you can address this if it is coccidiosis. Corid is one of them and Corid is something you do want to be careful with because it actually can be an inhibitor of their uh, thiamine and they need that to survive. Honestly, I would say don't use Corid uh, because you are going to have to do extra injections with that to make sure that they get the thiamine that they need and they don't, and that doesn't cause extra problems. So you can get Alban and that is something that is very easy to give. It's a five day treatment and, and you can, I can look that up and, and research it in my goat binder. It has all that information. And so just be watching for that. So with that, um, there will be usually it's kind of a blackish poop um, that that will occur if your goat ha is dealing with that. And so just to conclude, as far as this, where we're talking about diarrhea and coccidiosis and, and worms, I wanted to mention, so in newborns, because they're pre-ruminant, their rumen is actually not functioning when they're born, they aren't going to be dealing with worms but about three weeks of age when they become, when their rumen starts to become more active and they are running around and they are putting everything, everything, it's true, isn't it? You put everything in your mouth. They put everything in their mouth and it can then at that point become a problem. Worms can become a problem. And um, so that's when you're gonna wanna be watching that. So, uh, you know, they're gonna be out there and they're gonna be getting poop in their mouth and getting stuff from that. Or, you know, in the early spring too, when the grass is so short and things are becoming active, um, the worms are, are and the, they're crawling up the grass and the, your little babies are gonna be chewing on, on the grass and stuff when it's so short. And um, that, that's just another way that they can get worms. So that is something to pay attention to it as well. I just realized I should have mentioned dehydration uh, at the very beginning uh, because that goes along with milk. You know, if your baby is not getting the milk that it needs, then uh, it's going to become dehydrated. And dehydration is very serious and you're gonna need to get that, that baby hydrated as quickly as possible. And so having an electrolyte on hand or having a recipe for a homemade electrolyte um, can be very handy because it's not something uh, you're gonna wanna have. Like usually things are gonna happen on the weekend when everything's closed in the middle of the night and you can't find something. And so just having those things on hand for those moments where like, ooh, I need to get this and we need to act quickly, you know, it can help rehydrate that, that goat um, so that then they can start feeling better to start nursing again and so on. So don't let your babies get dehydrated and make sure that they are actually getting the milk that they need. To be in there now. Get to change kids. Yeah. Look at you. Got another black little kid with a little spot. What is your name gonna be? Spot. Or it could be Bullseye. Oh, Bullseye? Uh oh, let's not name you that. Bad things might happen to a bullseye. Another thing to pay attention to, especially right at birth, but I kind of mentioned this with that goat that was uh, shivering because he didn't get enough milk. He was actually several weeks old, but it's weak kid syndrome. And so most likely you'll come out, you might come out into the barn and find this uh, baby, this newborn baby that is weak. It can't stand. It has a very, it's a be temperature is below 100, um, which is very bad. That means things are shutting down inside. And uh, so a lot of times these are nutritionally related or they are weather related or both. <laughs> uh, because sometimes, you know, it's so cold and the baby just uh, can't do it and it gets so cold. And then because it's so cold, it's not eating and then it, it compounds. And so weak kid syndrome is very serious. You need to make sure that if it is cold weather that your goats do have a warm place to get out of the temperature. And then just know that some of them um, might be just more susceptible to cold. And so you've got to just pay attention. Some kids are going to be okay when it gets slightly colder in the spring at nighttime and some aren't. So have a place where your babies can stay warm and not 
get cold and again make sure that they're getting the milk that they need so that is specifically called weak kid syndrome and and you want to be watching for that now know that you do not want to feed a baby that has temperature below 100 you have to warm them up to above 100 and temperatures with their body heat so you're want you need your temp your thermometer always have a thermometer on hand always be checking their temperature so you know what's happening inside and um, don't feed them uh, um, until they are warmed up and uh, that that is very key okay so we have two extremes so we have what I just mentioned was the weak kid syndrome that baby is most likely hasn't gotten enough milk and then you have the opposite of that floppy kid syndrome where they have gotten too much milk. Now usually this happens when with bottle fed babies. They are being fed too much and their body is overwhelmed with milk and it, it's very serious and it can kill very quickly. So you need to know how much to feed your babies and you need to know how often to feed them and then when they act like they're absolutely starving you don't feed them anymore even if they demand it and act like they might just croak because they, they are starving, starving. Don't feed your baby kids too much. And sometimes it can also happen with a dam raised baby that's producing a lot of milk and she's in a confined area and she can't get away from the babies. And, and sometimes that does happen with them as well. So um, be aware that you have to feed the proper amounts with your kids or um, they can get floppy kid syndrome and that can be very very bad. Another thing that can happen with babies that can affect them for the rest of their life is something called joint ill or navel ill and that is where bacteria travels up the navel and goes into the body and causes problems and actually it it goes into their joints and and their joints will just blow up they'll just they'll swell they'll big problems and and then usually they can get arthritis and things at a very young age that will affect them for the rest of their life so the best way to avoid that is upon birth to uh, to dip their their navel in uh, in something like iodine it's just that that stops that bacteria um, if there is any around your place it just stops it from causing problems in their lives and if your baby does get joint ill uh, that is something you're gonna have to give antibiotics for uh, a long duration of time potentially and and like I said it can cause lifelong problems so it's an easy thing to just dip those navel cords in some iodine right after birth. So another thing to always watch for is with actually goats of any age, so it can happen to babies and it can happen to any any age of a goat, is enterotoxemia. That is basically poisoning from within. So with babies, it can be that, like the floppy kid, that uh, they are getting too much milk in their system and, and it, that's not good for them. And so it's basically poisoning them from inside, but they can also get into that chicken feed because the door was left open or the bag was left out or something. So if they're into a lot of that sacked feed and they get too much of it, it poisons them. Uh, you'll, so you're going to want to keep the CDT antitoxin on hand for those immediate, immediate problems. If you know your go goats got into something, that can help hopefully stop the progress of this and help it get under control. So basically, feed your kids their proper amount and keep those sacked feeds away from your goats it is key it's like not a question lock it up and throw away the key <laughs> i mean it's amazing how goats can get into so much and and it's amazing how no matter how how you feel like you do it just right it's so it happens so often that goats get into sacked feed that they shouldn't all right, I'm going to quickly talk about pneumonia. I do have a video on pneumonia on my channel, so do watch that. It, I mean, really, it's important to know about because it can kill very, very quickly. And so you need to know what the signs are and what to do so you can act fast. And it can affect your babies as well. When we're having these springs where it is like tomorrow, it's going to be 72. And the next day, it's going to be down in like the 30s. That's a huge difference in temperature. And so those swings in temperature where it's high and low and high and low are actually really hard on our animals and can promote uh, pneumonia and so that's another thing to watch for so always be watching their temperature 
and for any listlessness and, and things like that. But I will let you watch that other video to get the full information on that. So another thing that you might find at birth is selenium deficiency. Now some areas in, in our country and world are just naturally deficient in selenium and our feeds, um, our hay that we bring and all of that are uh, just deficient and so you need to know your area in that of uh, and know if you need to begin giving um, some selenium some Bose Bose shots and um, and sometimes the babies can be selenium deficient and really they're they're weak they're when they're born they may be walking on their walking with their legs kind of bent and crooked and they're just weak and not as strong as they should be um, but I, I strongly urge you to really uh, know your area because it's something that can be easily overdosed. And, and this, the weird thing is that the the overdose symptoms are the same as the if they're uh, short on selenium symptoms. So you <laughs> need to be careful with that as well, um, so that you're that you know what you're doing when you're you're giving that. But you may find though that your if your babies are all and your your does are showing signs of selenium deficiency that you do need to give them a shot once a year to help them with that. Another thing that can be a problem with your goats is urinary calculi and it's usually going to affect your boy goats that have been weathered but sometimes it can affect your your bucks as well and that it's it's nutritionally related and so you want to be making sure you're feeding a balanced diet. I'm not going to go into the details of the cause of it but many times it's caused by weathering your your boy goats too soon because they're not fully developed so allow your boy goats to fully develop and then usually most likely you won't have problems with this but uh, again you need to have your balanced feed you need to have your calcium your phosphorus ratios all correct and um, and that will also greatly help you just avoid this situation as well um, but your water can affect all of this so I have a video on my channel about just how water source can affect the health of your goats um, so just know that you need to be weathering them after they're more fully developed wait that extra month to band them and feed them properly and and most likely you'll avoid this situation and the last thing that I'm going to mention is that is just vitamin and mineral deficiencies now your does need to be in good healthy condition to have healthy babies and so that is just a key when they're being when they're developed in their mommy the mama's nutrition will affect the baby's nutrition and so keep your dose healthy keep those vitamin and minerals out and then they'll be out as well for the babies to be nibbling on as well and just feed them a good balanced and healthy diet uh, because they're you know vitamin deficiencies can have and bring on a whole host of problems that you don't want to be dealing with so just make sure that that your does are healthy, your bucks are healthy, and then that you keep your babies healthy by giving them a good and balanced diet. All right, thank you for joining me in this video. My name is Delcy from A Life of Heritage, and I just wanna help you raise healthy goats. And it usually all starts with those baby goats. So learn as much as you can, keep them healthy and strong, and you yourself keep learning so that you know what to do if something arises. I hope you have a great day, have a great week, snuggle with those baby goats, and we'll see you in that next video.